During World War I, the Freemasonic governments managed to destroy the Islamic Caliphate and annex all its territories. The part now called Iraq was put to British mandate and current borders were defined by them and through the Iran-Iraq War. During World War II, Germany was completely annexed by Britain and France, along with the United States, another Masonic nation, and the Soviet Union. Under complete Masonic control, an economic union may suffice, but to keep it there, they would need a military union, and that union would be none other than the UN. There will be one currency, one economy, and one government and the government would most certainly be a Masonic government. Oh, Muslims, let me tell you something that you should need to know. There's a report that's been put out. This report has been developed in America. It is what most of the governments in the world today are using as a ruler and a parameter to judge Muslims, to evaluate Muslims, to diagnose Muslims. And let me read to you what they have said concerning us. They are fundamentalists. They are traditionalists. They are modernists. And they are secularists. Let me define those terminologies for you. Fundamentalist means those people who are saying we want to go back to the Quran and the Sunnah. We want to establish the Quran and the Sunnah. We want to follow the three generations of Islam. No, we do not want bid'ah. Ah. We don't want khulu. We don't want excess. We want Islam, the Quran, and the Sunnah, and all our actions, and that's it. They call us, those who say that, fundamentalists. Although in Islam there's nothing called fundamentalism. Then there are the traditionalists. These are the people who also say they follow the Quran and the Sunnah, but they hold on to a certain classical tradition. They say we are Wahhabi. They say we are Hanafi. They say we are Shi'i. They say we are Maliki. Although those four men, Ahmed ibn Hanbal, Imam Shafi rahimullah, Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik. Although those are our fathers, those are our scholars, those are the mujtahideen of Islam and the greatest people who brought Dalil to us from those generations, no doubt. But following them blindly as a tradition is what the category here is. People who follow them blindly and therefore they don't unite with anybody else except those who follow each one blindly. They are called traditionalists. Then there are the modernists. The modernists are those who want to make a new interpretation of the Quran. They want to make a new interpretation of the Sunnah. They want to make a new interpretation of Islam. In fact, they are the people who may want to join all the religions together to have what they call peaceful coexistence. They are the people who call themselves Wahdatul Adiyan. That is, they want to join with all the religions together, Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianism, Christianism, so on, 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 so make it one all religion. It even sounds funny, don't it? We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. A world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. We don't know who might become the leader of this new world religion. But the people who call for that among the Muslims, they are the misguided people and they have joined the enemies of Islam. No matter how intellectual they are, no matter how sincere they are, no matter how educated that they are, they have joined the camp of the enemies of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they have said by doing so that Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, has not given to us the haqq and that this deen of the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the wala and bara, the loyalty and the disassociation, the loyalty for the Muslims and the disassociation of the Kafirs, 
that there's nothing like that in Islam. We just go along down the road with whoever's happy with us, we happy with them too. These times of tribulation are like a giant sieve, sorting out the true believers from the apostates and hypocrites. Many have adopted the lifestyle and philosophy of the Dajjal system, retaining perhaps only their Muslim names or clothing. Uh, this time we have made clothes for the children. It's all Muslim style. Ke. Aur, uh, see, now we don't used to it. Uh, so I like to do that. So on Eid we'll do that. It's very simple. Wearing them like a badge to their identity and in every other way embracing wholeheartedly the system that is being used to eradicate Islam. A system that stood still whilst mothers saw their children dragged away by soldiers during the night, never to return, simply because they spoke out against being refugees in their own homeland. And the same system that said nothing to the tyrant that gassed women and children simply because he danced the Masonic tune. For those who choose this system, claim to love Allah and his messenger, but hate what he has brought. Leave the guidance that is Islam, and they adhere to the evil system of the Dajjal, living their lives in accordance with its rules, and seeking from it worldly rewards, disregarding the truth that is the laws of Allah. O oh Muslims, they have come up also with a formula. Not only have they classified us, but they have also come up with a formula to deal with every category and how to create hostility and opposition between the different categories. The Prophet Muhammad said that a time would come when the whole world would gather around to plan the destruction of the Muslims as if they were gathered around a table to take part in a meal. Today the nations of the world are doing just that around the circular tables of the United Nations General Assembly Hall. He also said that the time of the Dajjal will be years of confusion. People will believe a liar and disbelieve one who is trustworthy. And those who rebel against God will have a say in general affair. They have determined that the greatest threat to Western civilization and the continued dominance of Western culture is to make sure that no nation among the Muslims develop among themselves a global identity and secondly they never ever ever have the ability to re-establish the Khilafah now this is in their protocols this is what you should understand this is what they are preserving this division is subtle and hidden meaning that most Muslims wouldn't even know it they have divided and conquered, instilling diseases such as nationalism and racism into the heart of the Ummah. Their biggest fear is Muslim unity and revival of the message brought by the last prophet to mankind. Without the division of wealth and false leadership of these nations, nothing would prevent the purest Islamic movements from coming to power. And Muslim unity is the greatest fear of the forerunners to the Dajjal. In this way, we can maximize our global agenda and we can minimize any global threat from them. SubhanAllah, look how clear they are. Look how bold they are. Look how blatant they are. And look how accurate they are. The system set up by the forerunners to the Dajjal have ensnared many Muslims away from truth using lures such as wealth and materialism and fulfillment of earthly desires. The Dajjal has placed a strong hold in the very heart of Islam itself and laid a firm grip on the Muslim holy lands.